Welcome to this talk about the Measure and Reprogram Technique 2.0, Multi-Round Fiat Shamir and more. My name is Jelle Don, and this is joint work with Serge Sphere and Christian Mayans. Our work is about proofing Fiat Shamir digital signatures and in general Fiat Shamir zero-knowledge proof systems secure against quantum attackers. Whereby secure we mean secure in the quantum random oracle model. What we do is we extend an existing QROM technique to a larger class of applications, notably multi-round fiat Shamir signatures, of which MQDSS is an example, bullet proofs and sequential OR proofs. And finally, we also show that the reductions that we get from applying these techniques are essentially tight. I'll dive right in by explaining the quantum random oracle model. Uh, suppose we have some protocol uh, that makes use of a public hash function. Then proving security in the QROM means that we model the public hash function as an external random oracle to which all parties in the protocol have quantum query access. And this means that the function cannot be computed locally, but all parties can query a superposition of inputs. And this is a natural assumption since uh, the hash function is uh, assumed to be public uh, anyone can uh, build a quantum circuit to evaluate it. And once you have a quantum circuit to evaluate the function, then it's easy to evaluate on a superposition of inputs. Uh, but the problem is that in many classical random oracle model proofs, we want to observe the queries that the adversary makes. Uh, but as you probably know, observing a quantum state can cause it to collapse. And if the... Uh, query state of the adversary collapses, this might uh, as well collapse the internal state of the adversary and then we can no longer predict anything about the adversary's uh, output. Uh, in general, that is, because we present a theorem uh, that uh, deals with so-called multi-input reprogrammability of the QROM. It says that if we are in this situation where we have an adversary making Q quantum queries to some uh, random oracle H uh, and then outputs uh, an array. Uh, so I use the bold font here for arrays uh, of uh, input values to the oracle uh, and some additional output Z such that we, we, know, <laughs> we know something about, uh, about this output, the, the probability of this output um, being such that x together with uh, the hash values of x and z satisfy some arbitrary predicate v. Uh, then uh, there exists a simulator that can sort of creep in between the adversary and the oracle uh, and uh, choose n of the adversary's queries at random, measure them, uh, and on the input that it finds, so in this example n is 2 and it the simulator finds xi and xj. It can then reprogram the oracle to fresh random values theta i and theta j uh, and continue the run of the adversary such that its final output x bar z bar uh, will satisfy the same predicate v uh, but now with respect to these freshly programmed random values theta. Uh, and as you can see we can even uh, compare the, the probabilities for specific choices uh, of this array uh, x0. Uh, but by summing the inequality, we can also make more general statements. Uh, and of course, uh, as you can also see, this all comes at uh, multipli multiplicative loss of order q to the power 2n. Uh, but indeed, uh, they are polynomially related for constant or logarithmic n. Right, uh, another uh, observation that we can make is that instead of talking to a real random oracle uh, uh, itself, the simulator can also use a quantum secure pseudo random function uh, in order if, 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 if A is at least computationally bounded so that he will not notice the difference. Uh, right, uh, so that's the, the main technical result. Uh, it may all seem a bit abstract at this point, but we can actually 
uh, use it uh, and apply it to prove uh, security of uh, multi-round fiat shamir. So very quickly, multi-round fiat shamir takes uh, some uh, public coin interactive proof system by N uh, and uh, turns it into a non-interactive non scheme. And we show that the uh, advantage of the best adversary against the non-interactive scheme is at most order Q to the power two, order Q to the power two N times as big as uh, the adversary, the best adversary against the interactive scheme. Uh, and the, indeed this is tight uh, because in our paper we uh, provide an attack. Uh, first, uh, we provide an attack for typical three round schemes, the so-called Sigma protocols, uh, which indeed uh, boosts the success of the best interactive adversary by a factor Q2, uh, Q, Q squared, uh, showing that for N equals one, uh, this loss is optimal. Uh, and then we extend the attack to uh, a somewhat artificial multi-round scheme. And we get uh, almost the same boost, uh, except for this factor, n to the power minus 2n. But since we're usually considering n to be constant, uh, that means that asymp asymptotically q to the power 2n is uh, optimal as well. Okay, for the rest of the talk, I'll uh, give you a bit more detail about uh, how the fiat chamois transformation works, how the original result is applied to prove it's secure. And uh, then we'll come to the, the motivation for this uh, uh, new work, namely multi-round fiat chamois. And I'll discuss what we need to prove that secure. Uh, then I'll give you the proof idea for this uh, main result that we have. And I'll finish off by talking about uh, yet another application in the sequential or proofs. Right, so uh, suppose that we have this uh, three round identification scheme where some prover can prove its uh, identity uh, by sending a commitment to a verifier. And then upon receiving a challenge, a random, this must be a, a uniformly random challenge, uh, uses its knowledge of some secret key to compute a response. And then the verifier who of course knows the public key of this prover can uh, compute some predicate on the messages to verify that indeed uh, this prover must have known the secret key. Uh, now, since this is an interactive protocol, uh, we could ask if we could make it non-interactive and the fiat chamois transformation says that we may do so by introducing this public hash function H uh, and then let the prover instead of waiting for a random challenge, uh, compute a challenge himself simply by hashing the public key in the commitment. Uh, then it only needs to send the commitment and the response since the verifier on his side also knows how to evaluate H. So it can recompute this challenge and verify again that the response is correct with respect to uh, uh, this particular commitment uh, and this particular challenge. Additionally, the prover could send a message along with this commitment and response, as well as include it in the hash. Including it in the hash ensures the integrity of the message, which combined with the proof of identity makes for a digital signature. So this is the idea of fiat Shamir signatures. Well, to prove this construction secure in the QROM, uh, Don Fehr, Mines and Schaffner in 2019 presented the measure and reprogram technique which is basically the same as uh, the multi-input version, which I already presented to you, uh, except that now uh, the output of the adversary is just this uh, single hash input X along with C. Uh, and the simulator now chooses uh, just one of the adversary's queries at random, measures it, uh, reprograms the Oracle on this input to uh, a fresh random value theta. And then we uh, again get the guarantee that some predicate V holds now with respect to theta uh, up to uh, a Q squared loss. Uh, and also here we have uh, an additive error term, uh, but the theorem has the promise that even when summing over all possible instances of X naught, the error term remains negligible. So we don't have to worry about it. 
Okay, now I'll finally show you how to uh, apply this tool in uh, a reduction for the plane fiat Xiaomi transformation. What we want to do in the reduction is turn uh, a prover against the non-interactive fiat Xiaomi scheme uh, into a prover for the interactive scheme to show that uh, both are approximately equally hard to break. Uh, well, the pattern uh, uh, can be matched as follows. We know that the adversary will output a public key, a commitment and a response. So the public key and the commitment take the role of X and the response takes the role of C. Uh, which means that uh, we can uh, start up an interactive protocol uh, by running the adversary uh, as a subroutine and just wait until uh, the particular uh, query comes up that we have chosen randomly to measure. Uh, once we've measured it, we have uh, a public key and a commitment. So we can send that to the interactive verifier. Uh, the challenge that we uh, get in return, we uh, program into the Oracle and feed it back to the adversary. And now we just have to wait uh, for the adversary to finish and we get uh, a response. Uh, which we then forward back to the verifier. And now, of course, with this uh, inequality at hand, we know that the probability that this response is correct with respect to this challenge, which uh, uh, is represented here by theta, uh, is approximately uh, the same up to this Q squared loss as the probability that the original adversary can break the non-interactive via Chamber scheme. So that's the, that's the reduction. Uh, but as I said, uh, this is only a plain fiat Shamir for uh, three round schemes. Uh, the main topic of the current work is about multi-round fiat Shamir. Uh, and indeed, there uh, exist many uh, uh, um, two n plus one round public coin interactive proof systems for constant, but also logarithmic n, uh, where uh, we can again uh, remove the interaction in a fiat Shamir uh, heuristic uh, way. Uh, it looks like this. We have an interactive scheme consisting of many rounds. And uh, just as before, all these uh, uniformly random challenges can, re uh, can be replaced by uh, uh, outputs of some public hash function, which the verifier can uh, compute in its, on its own. Uh, so that the prover uh, only needs to send uh, the n different commitments and the final response. Uh, and, uh, and that's enough for the verifier to, uh, to check the, the verification predicate. Uh, but now, of course, um, in the reduction, we need to extract all of these commitments, all of these hash inputs, uh, in order to uh, reprogram the Oracle value to the challenges that we get from the interactive verifier. Now, to do that, uh, obviously, what we need is uh, a measure and reprogram technique, but now one that can handle uh, um, multiple measurements. Well, of course, that is exactly the theorem that I already presented to you at the beginning of this talk. But let's for a moment assume that we don't yet know how to relate uh, the left-hand side uh, to the right-hand side scenario. How, how would we go about proving this inequality uh, starting just from the single input measure and reprogram tool? Uh, well, uh, what we do is uh, starting from this uh, multi-input adversary, we simply rewrite its output, this array consisting of x's, uh, rewrite it as uh, just x1 with some z prime where now we uh, sort of put all the uh, all the other x values, x2 up to xn, inside c prime. And it also contains the original uh, additional output c. Uh, so we really didn't do anything except uh, just some formal trick rewriting. Uh, but now the output has exactly the form uh, to which we can apply the single input result. Uh, namely, we get the existence of a simulator that picks one of A's queries at random, measures it, finds X1, 
and reprograms uh, the Oracle at X1 to Theta1 such that now the predicate uh, holds with respect to Theta1 instead of H of X1. And note that here uh, we made the choice to uh, let S talk to uh, the real random oracle instead of uh, letting it use a pseudo random function. Uh, and the reason for this is that we can now consider uh, A and S together as yet another algorithm, uh, which uh, just has this particular output x1 c prime, which we can again uh, rewrite such that now uh, x2 is the prominent has input and uh, z double prime has all the other x's and the original z. So that, of course, as you can guess, we can apply the single input result again to uh, now measure x2. And uh, continuing uh, for n times, we will eventually get an algorithm which uh, outputs x1 up to xn and z such that the predicate v checks out with respect to theta1 up to theta n. But what is now the loss factor that we get from this inductive application? Well, from the first application, we get uh, a q squared loss and as well as this uh, additive error term. Uh, and then uh, in the second application, we're up to q to the fourth and we have two error terms. So continuing the pattern, we indeed get this promised q to the power 2n multiplicative loss and uh, a sum of n error terms. Uh, and if you remember, we had the promise that for each i, summing over all possible instances, xi0, this error term remains negligible. So surely summing over n of them, uh, keeping in mind that in applications n is constant or logarithmic, the whole sum will remain negligible. Uh, but the problem is that uh, this is not what we need. Uh, if we have a careful look at the inequality uh, down here, we see that this is for one particular choice of the array x0, so for one choice of combinations x1 up to xn. Uh, and if we sum over all possible arrays, we're going to sum over many more values than uh, just uh, each of the xi's summed independently. So we can no longer control the size of this combined error that we have here. Uh, and this proved indeed to be a, a, a substantial barrier to completing the proof. So what we had to do was go back to the original single input result. And you'll now see why we call it the measure and reprogram technique 2.0. Uh, because what we did is we uh, improved the original single input result. We gave a, a different proof that uh, doesn't have the need for this negligible error term, uh, which makes the statement cleaner and well, for single input applications, uh, we get a negligible quantitative improvement, but most importantly, we lose the error terms in the multi-input case, uh, and we get the result that we wanted. Now, one small uh, issue that I have to mention as well, if we now want to apply this multi-input uh, uh, reprogramming results to multi-round fiat Shamir, there's one more thing that we need to take care of. As you can see, this inductive application of the single input result does not give us any guarantee on the order of the hash inputs that we extract. Uh, here in this example, x2 is extracted before x3, but also before x1. And in the reduction that we want to uh, perform, uh, the interactive verifier uh, expects these commitments in a particular order. We cannot just send it COM2 first and COM1 only at some later point. So somehow we need to uh, ensure that we extract the commitments in the right order. Uh, the way to do that is simply to include the previous challenge in the hash for the next challenge. 
which would mean in this example that uh, before the adversary could even query x2, it needs to know the value of theta1 since it will be uh, in, uh, a part of x2. Uh, so that, uh, that enforces the, the adversary to query all the hash inputs in the correct order. Uh, this is not our contribution, this is folklore knowledge uh, uh, also for classical multi-round fiat Shamir, but I just wanted to mention it to complete the analysis. Okay, so finally, uh, a few words about uh, another application of our new technique, namely sequential OR proofs. Uh, this is uh, uh, something introduced by Liu Wei and Wang in 2004. And it's, it's via Chami with a twist, which allows a prover to prove the truth of uh, at least one of two statements, x1, x2, without revealing which one. So it's, it's a proof of the disjun disjunction, really. Uh, and how does it work? Well, uh, the, uh, we, we, we start from a, a simple three round uh, sigma protocol and we uh, use a hash function to turn it into a non-interactive scheme. Uh, but now the, uh, the challenges are computed over cross. The prover has to provide x1, com1, x2, com2, and then uses h of com2 in order to compute the response that will be used to prove the statement, uh, the truth of statement x1. And vice versa, it uses h of com1 to compute the response that will be verified uh, to determine the truth of statement x2. Now, if we look carefully, uh, we see that the, only for this statement corresponding to the commitment that is the first out of the two that gets queried to h, only for this statement, uh, the prover needs to actually know a witness in order to compute a valid response. Why is this so? Well, let's have a look. Uh, suppose for now that uh, COM1 is the, for the the commitment that gets queried first. Then before uh, having anything to do with COM2, the prover already knows H of COM1. In other words, knows the challenge that it will need to compute a response to. Uh, but by the honest verifier zero knowledge property, Knowing the challenge before knowing the commitment allows one to compute the fake proof. So to find some COM2 and response to such that this predicate uh, is satisfied for X2, uh, even without, uh, without knowing a witness for X2. Uh, and then if COM2 uh, has been determined by this fake proof, then the prover can uh, query it to H to find the challenge, uh, which now using a witness for X1, it can compute a valid response uh, so that uh, also the the other predicate is satisfied. Uh, so the, the security reduction uh, uh, works similarly. Uh, we want to use a non-interactive uh, uh, adversary to uh, convince uh, one of the, the two verifiers or the verifier on, on one of the two statements. Uh, but note that in order to do so, we, we have to extract both COM1 and COM2 from this non-interactive adversary. Uh, namely, we have to uh, extract COM1 because this is the commitment that uh, we are going to uh, submit to the verifier. Remember, we're assuming that uh, X1 is the, is the statement that is actually true. Uh, so the COM1 is the one that we're going to submit to the verifier, uh, but we also need to extract COM2 because uh, COM2 is the input to the random oracle on which we need to uh, reprogram uh, in order to uh, inject the challenge that we get from this verifier so that the response computed by the non-interactive adversary will be valid with respect to COM1 and uh, the, this challenge that we reprogrammed to. Uh, so, uh, yeah, indeed, using the 
multi-input re measure and reprogram technique, we can uh, now for the first time provide, provide a QROM reduction for this uh, sequential OR proofs. That concludes the talk. Thank you for listening.